Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Only Truth podcast. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this episode. I'm so happy that you are here, and I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that you are listening to this message for a reason and for a purpose. So I just want to say, welcome. So, on this podcast, we talk about the only truth, hence the name of the podcast, The Only Truth. And the only truth is the truth of Jesus Christ. And that is what we talk about on this channel. And we talk about him, how he changes our lives, what his plan is for our life, and just how he is always with us in every season of life that we're going through. And I just want to take you along with me, just to the different lessons and areas of focus that I feel the Lord has put on my heart to share with you guys. So I'm very passionate about this podcast. So if you're interested, you know, you can check out some of my other videos. I have a lot of different topics that I touch on, but today's topic is pretty intense. And this is a call to the church, and this is a call to not let the enemy deceive you. And I want to start this podcast off with a question, which may be triggering for you guys, may be convicting, whatever, but I just want to ask you, how is your relationship with Christ? If you were to just take a step back and look, reflect on your relationship, your personal relationship with Christ, how would you say that that relationship is. And I bring that up because I'm reminded of the importance of truly abiding in Christ, especially always we need to be abiding in Christ, but especially these days that we're living in this, these dark days of just uncertainty, um, you know, where I truly believe that we are living in the end times. Like we don't have a lot of time to be wasting. And that's why I want to point out the most important thing about our faith is our relationship with Christ. Because without that, without the glue of that, then everything we do is in vain. So I'm also here to remind you that we have an enemy. Um, And, you know, a little backstory about the enemy of our souls is Lucifer. So Lucifer was one of the angels in heaven that God had created. Um, Lucifer caught a glimpse of himself and he liked what he saw. And he, and that is when sin entered into Lucifer's heart. And he decided that he wanted to be God. Um, And so there's war in heaven and the angels that had turned against God and went to Lucifer's side are now, um, are now fallen angels, which we are now experiencing, you know, the oppression of them on earth. Um, and it is for a time. They are not always going to be here. We literally have the entire story of life written here from Genesis to Revelation. So we don't have to fear about what is to happen. But right now, currently, this is what we are dealing with. And the enemy's main goal is to just destroy your life. If you are a follower of Christ, you know, the devil knows how important you are, how significant you are. He knows that if you have the Holy Spirit living in you, like you are able to accomplish mighty things for the kingdom and he does not like you, you know, so you may not see the power that's in you and you may not be acting in that authority, but the enemy sees the power that's in you and he knows what you're capable of because of who lives in you, not you, but because of the Holy Spirit residing in you and what the Holy Spirit can do in and through your life, that he is doing everything in his power to knock you off course, to get you distracted, to get you to not tap into that power. 
It says in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give life and to give it to the full. The enemy's schemes are to steal, kill, and destroy God's plan for your life. He does not want you to fulfill the purpose that God has put you on this earth for. And so he's going to do everything in his power and his deceitful ways um, to get you away from that plan. So another question that I want to ask, and I'm like, and I'm asking myself these questions too. I'm just saying this in general, you know, to the church itself, to the people who claim to be followers of Jesus. And I want to ask another question, and that is, are you truly making time for the Lord? And I mean, actual time with God, you know, reading one verse a day, to keep the devil away is not something that we should be putting our confidence in. Um, We need true transformation and we need to be in the transforming presence of God to be able to really become who he has made us to become. Like truly making that time and abiding in Christ. What do I mean when I say abide in Christ? So John 15 verses 4 through 11. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Jesus is making it very clear here. Without abiding in him, we can do nothing. Our works are in vain. The only true work, lasting transformation um, and significance in our lives is that of the fruit that has come out of abiding in Christ. Another reason that I want to say this is just especially because I feel the weight of being a Christian in these times is that many people can claim to be Christians. So people can claim to be Christians, but what it comes down to What is a Christian? What is basically the definition of a Christian? A Christian is a disciple of Jesus. Um, That means that, you know, you've accepted the call of God on your life to follow Jesus and you have surrendered it all. You've dropped it all and been like, I surrender to your will, Jesus, and I will follow you. Jesus says in Matthew 16, verses 24 through 25, Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That is what it means to be a Christian. It is to follow Jesus to the ends of the earth. It is to surrender your will, your desires, you know, um, your flesh, the sinful, you know, desires that we may be even more attuned to specifically in our situations. It is denying those things and following Jesus, making time for Jesus, sitting at his feet, gleaning from his words, listening to his teachings, being still in his presence, letting him transform you, you know, a relationship is something that you put effort into and you acknowledge that person um, and you learn to hear their voice. You learn to hear, you learn their character and their personality. You learn the attributes of that person. And so that is what we are doing when we are becoming, when we are disciples of Christ. And that is where all of our work is going to flow out of is that relationship with Christ. Um, And I say that because like I'm saying in this video, the enemy wants to deceive you. He wants to deceive you into thinking that if you are just, you know, serving at church somewhere, if you are preaching a word, if you are um, claiming to be a Christian, if you are saying these things, but your actions are void, 
then it doesn't mean anything. The enemy doesn't care if you're serving at a church and, you know, you're going to church, your attendance, whatever. The enemy cares if you're actually being transformed by God because he knows that that is where the real power comes into play. And um, because like Jesus said, apart from him, we can do nothing. We can listen to messages. We can preach a word. You know, we can um, we can serve at our local church. We can do all of these things. But if we are not truly being transformed by God and abiding in him, then our works are going to be in vain. So I'm going to read from Matthew and... These are some harsh words, so I'm just giving you a forewarning. But I just want to be very real with you guys because I believe that this is so important. So this is the tree and its fruit. You remember how we're talking about abiding in Christ and how, you know, abide in me and I in you and you will bear much fruit. So... Starting at 15, it says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit. That is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. So if someone is serving at the church and doing all of these things, but they don't have any fruit of the spirit, they're they're habitually living in sin without repentance. So you can know the tree by its fruit. When you are following your sinful nature, when you are not abiding in Christ, these are, these are the results according to Galatians 5, 19 through 21. And it says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you as I have before that anyone living in that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, and obviously, you know, we are going to struggle. We are not perfected yet. But when it's saying this, it's saying like you're purposefully living in these things and you're not in a repentant heart and And there's just no conviction and you just keep going about that lifestyle. Um, but it says the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And then it also says in the following verse, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. So you will know if you are truly abiding in Christ and if you are truly a disciple of Christ, if if the spirit is producing those things in your life. But if your life is more of a reflection of the first description of characteristics, I just want to encourage you to just take an inward look and seek the Lord and ask him, what can I do? What am I doing? How am I how can I be spending more intentional time with you and being transformed by you, Lord, so that I can have the fruits of the Spirit so that I could truly be a disciple of Christ? I don't want to just have a label on me as a Christian. I want it to be evident in my life. So yeah, I just want to encourage you to not let the enemy deceive you into thinking that you can be a disciple without abiding in Christ without the power of Christ himself. Your works are in vain if they are not motivated by the power, by the love of Christ. You can be one of the most powerful people, influencers, leaders, speakers, giftedness, all that stuff. You can be all of that. But if you are not compelled by the love of God, your works are in vain. And it is on a shaky foundation that will not last. 
And I say this because of 1 Corinthians 13. And so before chapter 13, 1 Corinthians 12 is talking about the body of Christ, the church with many parts, and talking about all of, you know, the gifts of the spirit and how we each are gifted with different in different areas to be able to build up and edify the church. So leadership, healing, um, unknown languages, the gift of faith, the gift of hospitality. There are so many different gifts that we can have in the church. But it says in chapter 13, the title of this chapter is Love is the Greatest. And it says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. It is all compelled through the love of Christ that we are able to carry out the purposes of God. Last thing that I want to touch on is that Jesus went away very, very often. As we can see, as you read the Gospels, the life of Jesus, you see that he is constantly going away to be with his father. Jesus was constantly praying, constantly seeking the father. He was always abiding in him. He would have to get away at times to be alone with him. Um, so how much more do we need to be doing that if Jesus himself did that? If Jesus needed to be abiding with the Holy Spirit, how much more do we have to be abiding with the Holy Spirit in order to bring about the plans and the purposes that God has for our life through our life to bring about his kingdom? Don't let the enemy deceive you into thinking that abiding in Christ is not absolutely necessary and that you don't need to constantly be getting away with the Lord and, you know, seeking him, working on your relationship with him, being transformed by his presence. Don't let the enemy slip into your mind and deceive you. And he can do that in such small, subtle ways where he'll just make your schedule so busy and be like, but look at all these good things that you're doing. You're doing great things. But if you are neglecting your relationship with your heavenly father, then the enemy has you exactly where he wants you to be. Um, so I just want to conclude with it is absolutely necessary to be making time for the Father, for abiding in Him, for being transformed by Him, because apart from Him, we can do nothing. So I just want to encourage you to make time for God. If you have to clear up your schedule, if you have to remove certain events from your life or, you know, whatever that may be, Jesus comes first. And through that transforming relationship with him, you are going to find your purpose. You are going to be living out the destiny that God has called you to live out. And he's going to empower you to be living that out. Um, so yeah. I hope that this message was encouraging. I know that it might have been like sometimes my pastor says it's like a little punch in the gut, but it's like a little back rub, you know. Um, it's like it might be convicting and it might hurt, but it's also like, but it's because I love you and because we need to hear this, you know. It would be not loving to to never talk about these things when these are the things that are actually going to have lasting effects on our life and build us up. But with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you feel like someone needs to hear this message, just make sure to share it with them. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. That is going to be it for today's video and I will see you in the next one. But until then, I hope that you have an amazing and blessed and beautiful day.